Hey everyone, I'm Johnny, and today we're taking a look at the PAC-40, or Panzer Abwehr Kanon 40, which was Germany's best dedicated anti-tank gun during World War II. Over 23,000 PAC-40s would be produced, and it proved to be an essential weapon on all fronts for Germany during the later half of the war. So let's take a closer look at this anti-tank gun and some of the movies it's featured in. Arrivederci. 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 When war broke out in September of 1939, the standard anti-tank weapon for Germany was the Pac-36, a weapon that would quickly become obsolete against all but light tanks. Its only effectiveness was somewhat stretched by the use of short-range, muzzle-mounted heat rounds. You're okay, Liv. Everything's right where it should be. Come on. Up, see Daisy. In 1940, the Pac-38 was introduced, a significant upgrade from the Pac-36. During the Eastern Campaign against the Soviet Union, the 38 would have mixed success, but struggled against the increasing presence of T-34s. From late 1941 onwards, it would be the 75mm Pac-40 that would prove itself highly effective against all but the heaviest Allied armor for the remainder of the war. The Pac-40 was essentially, by design, an upgun version of the Pac-38, and it can be hard to tell them apart on film, with their biggest difference being their size. For the crews, the reports were unambiguous. It was the Pac-40 that was needed against KV and T-34 tanks, and German command took notice. In April of 1942, the German army had 44 Pac-40s in service. By 1943, it'd be the most prolific anti-tank gun in German service. The Pac-40 has a muzzle velocity of 2,600 feet per second and can penetrate 116 millimeters of armor from a distance of 1,000 meters. This allowed for the weapon to be effective right up to the end of the war. A train crew of six could fire 14 rounds per minute or one round every three seconds with a crew of one in Battlefield 5. So effective was the Pac-40, it was also mounted on vehicles like the Martyr 3, and even showed up on half-tracks. The Pac-40 was referred to as the Stuk-40 when mounted on turretless tank destroyers, such as this Finnish Stug 3. When mounted in tanks, which would primarily be the Panzer IV, the gun was referred to as the KWK-40. The principal difference for Pac-40 variants used in armor was the type of primer used and the length of the rounds. Armored vehicles used shorter rounds to accommodate their limited storage capacity. The Germans had excellent anti-tank tactics and maneuvered their long-range anti-tank weapons such as the Pac-40 and multi-purpose flak guns in positions to give their tanks fallback positions. However, later in the war, weapons such as the Pac-40 lacked support vehicles. The Pac-40 was also heavy, being primarily made of steel as lightweight alloys were given priority to the German Air Force. Danke, danke. At over 3,100 pounds, with shells weighing up to 14 pounds, Pac-40s lacked rapid mobility. A lack of trucks always plagued Germany throughout the war, and Pac-40s, along with other equipment, were occasionally supplied and maneuvered by way of horse, reminiscent of World War I. The Pac-40 became a dependable defensive weapon towards the end of the war, when Germany was on the defensive and tank numbers dwindled. The Pac-40 would be used effectively in defensive positions with disciplined crews. Woodland areas such as in Finland and the narrow roadways in Europe made this a feared gun to be ambushed by. You don't know the worst. This bit we're on now, yes, it's the wide part. All right, I'm Johnny and thanks for watching. If you want to add any information on the Pac-40, please do so in the comments section below, and we'll see you next time.